Sonographic Assessment on the Cervical Lymph Nodes, ETA Ultrasound Course 2022. Hi, my name is Dr. Rosner. I'm a consultant exofacial radiologist at Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital in London. Let me take you through to the level of the neck, which you might have gone through in the anatomy part of the ultrasound course. Um, the neck is divided into seven levels, as we could see here. Level one is split between 1A and 1B, which is the submental region and the submental uh, region. Uh, this, as you could see here, are the uh, submental nodes and the submental nodes. Uh, the facial nodes drain into this, as well as the uh, protic lymph nodes coming in into level 2, uh, which is split between 2A and 2B. This receives drainage from the uh, mastoid and post-auricular lymph nodes and the occipital nodes. This drains into the internal jugular uh, chain nodes, which runs to level 2, 3, 4, and these jugular uh, lymph nodes are divided into the higher, mid, and lower. Over here are the transverse chain and the, uh, the spinal uh, accessory lymph nodes. Here you have level 6, which is the anterior portion of the neck below the hyoid bone. And going in past the sternal notch is the level 7. To recap what was just said, this is the Ronvier original representation of the lymphatic lymph node, and you can go through uh, the, uh, the name of the nodes uh, in your own time, as you could see here. There are 300 lymph nodes in the neck, and a normal lymph node should be very similar to what you see on histology. So it should be oval in shape, as you can see here, oval in shape. It should have a hyla com coming in here, and this is the chorogenic hylus that you can see. There should be a blood vessel through the hylus, and normally you'll find it through here as well if you put the color and power Doppler on. The uh, cortex itself here should be homogeneous, hypoid cortex as you normally see here, and the aconogenic hylus. It should be well-defined, okay, and small in size and oval in shape. An abnormal lymph node will look very different compared to the normal one. So you'll, found, you'll find that the shape tend to be a bit more roundish, and if you measure the, uh, the ratio of the long, the short axis, this tend to be smaller than two. And as you could see here, there's a loss of an echogenic hyalus. Uh, this was found to, to be a non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And as you could see here, if so, if you take the long axis over the short axis, and you'll find that this is below two. And here, as you could see, there is no uh, hilum that you can see here at all and this is an SCC node. Uh, here you could see it's heterogeneous as well in echo texture internally. Other sign of abnormal lymph nodes are they tend to be markedly hypoechoic, they can be heterogeneous, they could be hyperechoic as you can see here. Other features of uh, abnormal lymph nodes include intranodular necrosis. And here you could see uh, the intranodular necrosis. And if you look carefully, there are extra capsular spread of the nodes. Color flow uh, can lead you uh, to make a diagnosis of abnormal lymph nodes. Here's an aberrant uh, looking vascularity in a lymphoma node. Uh, here you could hardly see any vascularity. This was in an SCC node. And here again, uh, an unusual pattern to the lymph node. You expect a normal one to be uh, with a, uh, through the hyla, but here the hyla is missing 
and the vascularity is unusual. If you spot that there are a number of lymph nodes or numerous number of lymph nodes at various level of the neck looking very much the same, uh, abnormal and enlarged or necrotic, then they're likely to be uh, a pathology going on here. Here you could see a very large looking lymph node more than usual. It has extra capsular spread. It has a mixture of hyperoquic and hypoquic echo texture. And if you look very, very closely, there are some very bright looking spac within this. These are known as punctate calcification. And if you look carefully, this is in the same patient, another lymph node uh, further uh, up the neck here. As you could see, this is at level three. And again, a, a very, uh, not a very well-defined lymph node with a solid looking appearance and punctate calcification within it. If you see a node with calcification, it's highly suspicious of PTC and one should always, always uh, have a good look within the thyroid gland. Some of the tips that I can give you include uh, if you note nodal metastasis from a primary tumor, uh, very site specific, it's important to understand the usual pattern of lymphatic spread. The most common tumor in the head and neck is squamous cell carcinoma. And the following slide, I will show you an example whereby this is in a 55 year old male with a swelling to the left level two. And if you look carefully here, here's the sternocleidal mastoid muscle. That's a necrotic looking lymph node. It's enlarged, it's round, it's hypocrite markedly hypocrite, it's lost, it's hyla. Uh, this is uh, uh, another feature to that node, as you could see here. And if you look on PAT, this node is hot on PAT. And if you scroll the PAT up slightly, most common cause of uh, unusual lymph node in level Two, if you think this is a metastasis, and if it's head and neck, uh, look at the tonsillar area. The tonsillar is hot, and this is likely to be a primary. Nodal disease outside the usual pattern can also suggest aggressiveness tumor or a second primary. So let me show you a case here. Uh, so this is in level two, left level two, and you have a node that is looking very, very abnormal, uh, markedly hyperbolic with a missing hilum here. And you look further down to the right side of the neck. So there are now disease sins in two different level uh, on both sides of the neck. Here is at level four, as you could see here, multiple lymph nodes and truly, truly abnormal presented both sides. And this was a patient who presented uh, with metastasis from the lung. Another tip that's very helpful uh, to note is in the salivary gland, and you will see this if you uh, scan level two, you see just the tail end of the protic gland and the protic gland has intraprotic lymph nodes, therefore it could have metastasis within the nodes or it could have other disease that affects lymph nodes. But remember the subnodal gland don't have uh, any lymph nodes due to the fact that it got encapsulated quite early on and therefore very unlikely to have any nodal disease or metastasis within it. So let's show you some cases. So here you could see this is the protic line and there is an enlargement 
of a lesion within the gland. Possibly it could be a lymph node. You could see the hilum is enlarged. This is adjacent to the sternocleidal mastoid muscle. Uh, it's avascular, and this is proven to be a follicular lymphoma. At the tail of the another patient, this is the tail of the protid. Again, very markedly hypoquick, enlarged lymph node. And this happened to be a non Hodgkin mental cell lymphoma. This is another patient uh, within the right protid, a very solid looking mass. And one will be forgiven uh, to think this is a slurry gland tumor. And remember uh, that metastasis can also happen, especially uh, from skin, from the eye, as it drains to the protid nodes. And uh, this has got an unusual pattern of vascularity within it. And on FNA, this is proven to be melanoma in the right protid. My next tip is not all necrotic nodes are malignant. Uh, think also that necrosis could be due to infection, an abscess, and a developmental kind of cyst, such as a brachycleft cyst. So let's take a look. Here you have a patient presented with a lump to the, ne to the neck. And on ultrasound, you could see there's a lesion sitting here, just at the tail end of the protid. And look closely, it's going towards the skin. That's the surface of the skin. That's the protic gland. That's the mass of the muscle. That's the uh, mandible. And here you could see there's very little vascularity just on the edges of it. And this on FNA proven to be TB. If a patient presented with a large cystic cavity at right level two, uh, one thing uh, that's most common in the younger age group is a congenital uh, brachyclephsis, and the most commonest is the second brachycleph. And as you could see here, also seen on an MRI full of fluid. So in summary, it's very important to assess the lymph nodes in the neck as part of your ultrasound investigation. Although I know your primary aim is to look at the thyroid gland. Document what level the node uh, was found in if you detected a pathological node. If pathological nodes are found, important to check is it etiology by effing the node as necessary. I hope that has been helpful and thank you very much for listening. Bye.